Hi everyone, I've created a video on the parts of a lab report. report. I think there are as many types of lab report formats out there as there are teachers you'll have in your lifetime. So I've based these off of the Labrite Instructional Project that originated out of North Carolina State University and is sponsored by the National Science Foundation. You can see the URL at the bottom left of this slide to give you more information on this initiative and to get more information on the parts of the lab report that I'll be exploring in this video. One thing that's a little bit different about this initiative is that it asks you to write your report in a different order that you present it in your report. So for instance, you can see that the top two things of the lab, the lab report that you present will be the title and the abstract, yet those are some of the last things you're actually supposed to do. And that's because in order to do your abstract or your title, you need a very solid idea of the shape of your lab report before you're able to write them effectively. So, what I'd like to do is first start with an example of an experiment that we can discuss as we walk through the parts of the lab report. Uh, in this lab report, example, uh, we're looking at cell cycle in cancer tissue. So in this experiment, we'll take two different types of tissue, normal tissue and cancerous tissue, look at them under a microscope, and try and determine what percentage of the cells are dividing. So our independent variable will be the types of tissue that we use, whether it's normal or cancerous, and our dependent variable will be the percentage of dividing cells. So the first thing we write are the methods. What did you do and how did you do it? So in the lab write format, you're going to be writing your methods in a paragraph format. There's also no materials section. So all of the materials that you're using should be written within your paragraph format. Also, try to write your procedure as efficiently as possible. Don't put in steps that a competent scientist would already know how to do. For instance, you don't need to talk about how you made your microscope slides if you just used basic standard procedures. But you do need to give that scientist all the information he needs to replicate your experiment. So the economy of words here is very important. Another common exclusion from the method section is the process you use to analyze your data. So once you've collected all of your samples of normal and cancerous tissue and you've looked at them under the microscope and you've got all your data written down, how did you go about analyzing your results to see if you had any statistical differences? Well, you need to write down what type of analysis you did in your methods section. A couple of hints is to use the past tense. Write your methods as if you've already done them. Use a passive voice. That means don't use I or we. Instead, use something like the microscopes were prepared using or something like that, not I prepared the microscopes by. Okay, and make sure to include diagrams or tables when applicable. If our independent variable was comparing 12 different types of tissues, well, you wouldn't want to list all 12 in your paragraph. So instead, you'd probably want to put them under a table with a nice uh, table title that said something like, table one, the independent variables used in this project, and then you had those independent variables listed. And then in your paragraph, you'd write something like, the tissues tested in this lab report are listed in table one. Okay, on to the results. What did you find? Begin with a succinct statement. Use one or two sentences to explain what you got. Then, Put your tables, graphs, or drawings into your results section. This is not your raw data. So if you took 200 samples, we don't want your, your, your raw data of all 200 samples. Use a summary. That's what the point of the table, graph, or drawing is. It's to organize and summarize your data. Make sure to have proper titles on that. 
Then you need to write about your data. So it's not just good enough to have your tables, graphs, or drawings in your results section. You also have to discuss it. So integrate text in that results section that talks about table one, graph one, or drawing one. Okay, remember that you're giving a description of these results, but you're not explaining them. That comes later. So remember to do proper labeling and have titles. Reference the tables in the text. So if you're talking about graph number one, say something like, as graph number one clearly indicates, yada, 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 yada. Next, make sure to avoid explanations in your results section. Okay, the next thing that you should write is the introduction. And here we need to get context for what the experiment is. So you need to establish the learning context for the lab. What is the lab about? In this case, the lab was about cancer and it's about the cell cycle. So the first paragraph of your lab report needs to solidly define what the cell cycle is, what cancer is, and how these things might be related to each other. Then you want to talk about what the objective for the experimental procedure or lab is. In this case, we're trying to see if we could recognize what cancer cells look like by looking at the cell cycle of these types of tissues. Okay. The next thing you want to do is to state your hypothesis and make sure that your hypothesis has your variables in it. Our experiment has the independent variables being the types of tissue being used and the dependent variable being the percentage of cells that are dividing. So your hypothesis should be something along the lines of if the cancerous tissues are compared to the normal tissues, it would be expected to find that the number of dividing cells is higher in the cancerous tissue. Okay, that was a bit long-winded, and I'm not sure if I had proper English in that one, but at least what I'm trying to get to the point of is showing that both variables are in your hypothesis. Okay, the next thing you want to do is to explain your scientific reasoning. A hypothesis is an educated guess. It's not a guess, so it's based on some type of research or past observation that you've had. Okay, notice that a lot of this background information and um, so expl explanation of scientific reasoning is going to require you to do some research. And if you are doing this research, you need to be able to quote and cite uh, the references that you're having right in the text. So the next we move on to the discussion. What does it mean? Begin with a succinct statement. Did your findings support your hypothesis? Give that to us in one or two sentences. Next, detail why your data supports or doesn't support your hypothesis. If it does support your hypothesis, it's fairly straightforward, but make sure to give the scientific reasoning of why your data does support this. Now, if your results don't match your hypothesis, this gets really exciting in science because this means that something unexpected happened. So you might have come up with a very significant finding or your experimental procedure might not have been well done. Um, Either way, it's a great learning opportunity. So make sure to offer some alternative explanations for why your results didn't match your hypothesis if that was the case. The next thing you need to do is to put your lab experiment into perspective. Focus on errors in the scientific procedure that could have affected your results, but don't focus on errors that could have easily been prevented. If one error was, I only used three, sample si three, three samples, for my experiment, well, it, and, you know, an uh, impartial observer would say, well, why didn't you use 20 or 30 or 40? If you could get more accurate data by using more samples, why was only three used? So if you have any type of error just based on laziness or um, inaccuracies in your measurements, those are not valid sources of error because you should be going through the effort of making that experiment better. So the next thing you want to do is to compare this experiment to other studies done on the issue. Does it support other findings? Does it go against what other findings have come up with? Make sure to state this and even reference future studies that could be done on this issue. If only a sample size of three was taken, maybe you could talk about how future studies could use larger sample sizes. 
Next is the conclusion. What have you learned? Make sure that you return to the purpose of the lab. What was the purpose of this lab? And how did your findings relate to this? Then explain what you learned from the lab. Be very specific and also be very authentic. Don't give fluff that you think your teacher might want to hear. Rather, be authentic and what are the things that you learned from this lab. Okay, on to the abstract. The abstract is the essence of the report. It's a one paragraph, 80 to 200 word summary of your report. Sometimes you can go up to two sentences for each part of the lab report, but generally one sentence per section of the lab report will suffice. So if you do a sentence for the introduction, one for the method, one for the results, one for the discussion, and one for the conclusion, you'll have about a five sentence summary. You'll notice that this is done at the very end because again, you need a very solid idea of what is in your lab report before you can write this section. Title. On to the title. Now, the title is actually one of the most difficult things to write about the lab report, and you should really be telling the reader what this is all about. Include the subject of the experiment. In our case, it's about the cell cycle and it's about cancer, but also include the key research variables. So the types of tissue being used and the, the way that we measured our results. By the, so look, calculating the percentage of cells that we're dividing. So make sure that both the independent and dependent variable along with the subject are in your title. Now, if you used a different type of research methodology than is normally done, then list it. But if you are doing a type of research methodology that would most commonly be associated with the type of lab report you're doing, it doesn't need to be listed. The last thing I want to talk about are references. What sources were used? Every time you say a fact or idea in your research paper that's not your own, you have to state where you got that from. So even if you're defining what the cell cycle is or what cancer is, you're getting that information from someone else unless you've actually done that experiment. So you need to find out um, a credible source and you need to cite that credible source directly in your introduction. So after you say that fact in your introduction, you need to cite it. Next, list your references in an APA format or a format predetermined by your teacher. So every single science journal out there has their own way of getting the references formatted. But a good one to start with is an APA format. There's lots of web applications out there that will help you do this as long as you know the URL or the ISBN number of the book or journal that you're using. So the references appears at the end of the report and it should be in alphabetical order. Just a note that primary resources are the most credible. Your teacher was taught the same way you are being taught now by another teacher. And that teacher got it from a textbook who got it from an editor who got it from hopefully the actual researchers that did it. But by that time, you've gone through a few different people before that information has come to you. So the closer you go to the source of information, the most credible that the more credible that uh, reference is. Wikipedia is a great starting point. On its own, the editor of Wikipedia is unknown to you. So it's not a great source for information, but it's a great source for primary sources. So if you look at a Wikipedia article, you can find out where they get their information from, and then you can go seeking out that information and find out that answer directly from the horse's mouth. Okay, that's all I have for you. I hope this helps. Please go check out the NCSU website for Labrite as listed below and get more information on each of these parts of your lab report. Hope you found this helpful. Happy writing.